Hi, I'm Michael from Environment Canterbury, and with the help of McDonald Gray, I'm going to show you one effective approach to managing wastewater produced when installing exposed aggregate driveways. Concrete wash water is so toxic that it can burn and kill fish as well as damaging plant life. City stormwater drains located on the roadsides take water and everything else that enters them straight into our rivers untreated. That is why wash water should never be allowed to enter stormwater drains or waterways. Today's approach is used on exposed aggregate driveways by McDonald Gray and as you'll see it is cost effective and easy to do. On any job, the first thing you'll need to consider is health and safety. As you'll see, the contractors working are all wearing personal protective equipment and everyone on site, including the homeowner, are aware of the hazards. For this method, you'll need a large sheet of black polythene, some form of pump, an IBC or similar large container, two to three meters length of hose, a couple of lengths of 200 by 25 timber or similar. We begin with the site already excavated and boxing in. The first step is to position the polythene sheet which will form the base of our containment area. The polythene is positioned at the roadside end of the driveway with one edge well inside the area to be concreted. The concrete is poured and needs to completely cover the edge of our polythene sheet. As far as containing tomorrow's wash water goes, that's all we need to do on day one. Once the concrete truck is emptied, the driver washes his chute into buckets, which he carries with him. He does this where possible over unsealed ground so that any wash water he spills will not end up in our stormwater system. The driver's wash water will go back with him to the concrete plant to be used to make more concrete. The concrete has set and the contractors begin to prepare the exposed aggregate. Firstly, the plastic inserted yesterday is unrolled and timber positioned underneath to form a bund. Next, the IBC is moved into position near the lowest point of the triangular bund. In this case, McDonald Gray are using a porter pump, so no external power supply is required. The contractors now begin exposing the aggregate driveway by washing off the top couple of millimetres, and as much of the water as possible is directed into the bund. As wash water enters the bunded area, the pump is switched on and the wash water is pumped into the IBC, leaving the sediment behind. Once the last of the wash water has been removed, any remaining sediment is shoveled into a separate container. Alternatively, a vacuum tanker can remove the wash water directly from the bund as it is produced. The advantage of using your own pump is that you can have the wash water collected in an IBC any time rather than having a vacuum tanker sitting on site during the whole wash off period. However you decide to collect your wash water, make sure you use a Wasteman's Code compliant liquid waste operator. This means the waste will be tracked and disposed of lawfully. A list of Wasteman's members is available on the Builder's Pocket Guide website. Make sure you keep your receipt as proof of correct disposal. The plastic can now be removed by cutting it off with a knife. The process demonstrated here today by McDonald Gray is only one method of containing and lawfully disposing of concrete wash water. It is simple, cost effective and most of the equipment is reusable so you should only have to buy it once. The driveway is now complete, the client is happy, there has been no illegal discharge or damage to the environment and McDonald Gray have maintained their reputation as a professional firm with great environmental management practices.